Hello, welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. I am Professor Greg Stevens, and as I just said, Here's the class, and we're all part of the Believer's Voice of Victory today on a Tuesday. Give yourself a hand, amen? Amen. Listen, I wanna thank Brother Copeland for inviting me to be on the broadcast to study and teach the Word of God to you. Kenneth Copeland's mission statement is to minister the Word of Faith by teaching believers who they are in Christ. That's what we're doing today, and it's my honor to be part of that calling. So let's pray over the broadcast today. Will you agree with me? Yes. All right, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the name that's above every name that's named in heaven and in earth, the name whom I'm named into, that you have written my name next to your name in the book of life. I've been washed in the blood and I thank you for your salvation. I thank you for your redemption. I thank you that I am crucified with you and buried with you, risen with you. I'm seated with you in heavenly places and rule and reign in this life by you, by Christ Jesus. My faith is in you and in that position. Lord, today as we open your word, reveal yourself to us that we've never seen before. Reveal yourself to us today. Speak to us through your word. And we allow that word to penetrate our spirits. We'll never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody that's in agreement would say amen. amen and amen. All right, we're talking about partnership, but hopefully kind of in a way that maybe you haven't heard before. I'm showing you examples of people who came into partnership with each other. They came into partnership with God, and whenever you come into partnership with God, whenever you covenant with him, walking in your covenant, in your timeline, your new covenant, reality and responsibility, you partner with him, everything in your life will change. It won't just affect you, it'll affect everyone around you. Amen. My grandfather made a decision. He went to a Brush Arbor meeting, the early 1900s, long before I ever was. And he went there with his brothers to throw rocks and stuff at the people and at the, at the preacher and all, make fun of them. That's why they went. And they went night after night after night doing that very thing. And uh, one night, all of a sudden, W.K. Stevens walked away from his brothers and walked down to the front and gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Filled with the Holy Ghost immediately. And his life changed. The direction of my family changed as a result of that one partnership with Jesus Christ. Be careful about making fun of, of, of pastors and ministers. You might end, well, never mind. No. <laughs> you, just, you, know, you just never know. So we talked about defining what a partner was, and one of the primary Greek words is the word koinia, to share with someone in something. Word appears 19 times in our New Testament. We've used several verses to look at. Ecclesiastes 4.9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. In 2 Corinthians chapter six and verse one, we then as workers together with him, we're co-workers, co-labors with him. We looked at uh, 1 Corinthians three, six through nine, where Paul writes, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And then on down it says, uh, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. No matter what your position is in the body of Christ or on the team, you're one. We have the same reward, the same, the, the multiplication factor of this thing is the same. We're labors together with God. You're God's building. Where partnerships, I told you last week, break down is that we don't share the same goal. It's when we begin to not share the same goal is when the partnership will suffer and when it'll break down. I, I'm reminded of a, of a verse I heard some time ago and I can't recall where it is. It says, for all seek their own and not the things of God. I don't wanna be that guy. I, wanna, I like being part of a team. I'm part of a good team, amen? amen? Yeah. I'm part of this team. Amen. I'm part of Kenneth Copeland's team. I'm part of the Word of Faith team. I'm part of Jesus' team. Amen. I'm following him as he follows Christ, amen. amen? So let's take a look at today. Let me take you over to a little book, um, page 356 in the Bible here. <laughs> <laughs> a book, the book of Ruth. 
Maybe it's a place that's a little, four little chapters, but it's so powerful and so important. A place where you may not have a whole lot of things that are highlighted together. Traditional, this book is read by the Jewish people during the Feast of Weeks, Shavuot. It's a book of only four chapters, as I said, but it's a love story. It's an essential book of prophecy. A lot of people don't realize it's a prophetic book. You can't understand Revelation 5 till you've read the book of Ruth. All right then. Jewish family, here's the story. They're having a famine. They leave their hometown in Bethlehem. What else happens in Bethlehem? David comes from Bethlehem. Jesus comes from Bethlehem. So they leave Bethlehem and they immigrate to Moab. Now the two sons of this family marry local girls, so they're not Jewish. But the father and the two sons will pass away. Now we have a problem. That's gonna leave the wife, Naomi, and the two daughter-in-laws destitute. They have nothing. And uh, hearing that things are better back home, Naomi decides, I'm going back to my home. I'm going back to Bethlehem. And she tells the two girls, you guys just stay here and remain in, this, in your homeland, and I'm gonna go back. And then Ruth will answer, and let's take a look at this now. In Ruth chapter one and verse 16, I'm gonna read verse 16 and 17, and let's see if we see a partnership form. And Ruth said, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge, and thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Look at there. There's covenant that just happened. Where thou diest will I die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And so she said, well, all right. So one daughter-in-law went with her. One didn't. One partnered with her, one stayed in her own hometown, her own land. Now, here's the deal. Here's the partnership part of this thing. In Israel, for widows and for, for people that didn't have support, there was a law that permitted, there was a law that what you would do is when you would reap the fields that you had planted, you could only go on one pass. In other words, I couldn't go back and reap from the same line that I had just gone. One pass, and you were to leave the edges uh, un, uncultivated. Un, un, you didn't reap from the edges, from the corners, and one pass as you went through. Now, I've been to Israel in modern day, especially up north in the Galilee region. You'll see that very thing. You'll see where the farmer has gone through that field. I walked through a, a barley field, I believe it was, uh, or wheat field, I'm not sure which one it was now, I can't recall. I'm walking through the field and I noticed the corners, they never did get any of the grain that was in the corners. And I noticed stalks all laying down on the ground and I, saw, I realized they're doing exactly what they were commanded to do so long ago, even to this day, they're honoring the word of God. Now, I realized according to that rule, I can grab the, the fruit or the grain or whatever's left from those corners for myself if I need it. And that's exactly what is happening. So Naomi and Ruth are of course in this situation. They're destitute, they're widows, they need some help and um, some support in their household. And what happens is she goes out with the people to glean what's left over. And when she does, this guy takes notice of her. Does anybody know who it is? Boaz is his name. He notices her. And so he's, wow, look at her. He makes an agreement with the guys who work for him. Boaz arranges for his reap, reapers to drop little handfuls. Make sure you don't get it all in the sack. Drop a little there to ensure that Ruth has an abundant gathering. Now when Naomi hears what has been happening, Naomi realizes we have good fortune happening right here. She's delighted because she realizes Boaz is kin to them. He's a nearer kinsman. He's a, he can become what we call a kinsman redeemer. There's a law in, in Jewish tradition, in the law of Moses, for something to happen here. All right, 
So in the days of Joshua, Israel, you didn't own land. So like today, if, if I sell you a piece of land, it's yours. It'll be, as long as you pay it off, it's yours forever. You'll pass it down to your children. Not so in Israel. Not so in Israel. Israel's land was granted in the days of Joshua to the tribes. It remained within the tribal family, meaning that the tribe of Judah can't buy up everybody else's land, all right? When someone sold property to pay debts or whatever the transaction was, they would view it as a lease. There were provisions for the land to eventually return to your family. Isn't that beautiful? A title deed, including the terms that a kinsman of the family could perform and redeem the property for the family. If a widow had no son, she could request the next of kin to take her and raise the children to continue the family bloodline. You're gonna see that with Tamar and with Judah. Now she realizes that Boaz is kin and he's a kinsman. Therefore, there's an opportunity now for us for her to regain the land that they left because of famine. The family property lost by her husband 10 years earlier, and Ruth will have a chance for a new life herself, and so will I. So in Ruth chapter three, she instructs her what to do. Now harvest time is a time of celebration. And they're celebrating at the end of the day after they, after they harvest. Look at this in chapter three. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said unto her, my daughter, shall I not seek rest for thee, that it may be well with thee? And now is not Boaz of our kindred, with whom maidens thou wast? Behold, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Now the threshing floor is where they would separate the grain and the chaff would would blow away in, in the wind. Wash thyself therefore, and anoint thee, and put thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but maketh not thyself known unto the man until he shall be done eating and drinking. She's like, now girl, clean yourself up (laughs) and get ready, because something good's about to happen. You don't know what's about to happen, but something good, they're in a partnership. All right, here we go. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, They would sleep by the the grain during harvest time. They stayed in the fields. And so he's sleeping by the threshing floor because they want to make sure nobody steals the grain. Okay, here we go. That had happened all the time throughout Israel's history. The other, uh, uh, other people would come in and steal what they had worked for. And it shall be when he lieth down that thou shalt mark, in verse four, the place where he shall lie. Thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down, and he will tell you what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, all that thou sayest unto me, I will do. And she went down unto the floor and did according to all that the mother-in-law bade her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of corn. There it is. And she came softly and uncovered his feet and laid her down. And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and he turned himself and behold, a woman lay at his feet. Well, now he woke up. He's like, wait, 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 who is that laying down there? Right? She didn't disturb him. Nothing illicit is happening here. And he said, who are you? Who art thou? Verse nine. And she answered, I am Ruth, thine handmaid. Spread therefore thy skirt over thine handmaid, for thou art a near kinsman. She let him know. You're a near kinsman. She made the first move here on this. Now that's important, I'll show you that in a minute. And he said, blessed be thou of the Lord my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, insomuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And now my daughter, fear not, I will do thee all that thou hast requested. For all the city of the people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman nearer than I. Okay, we got a problem. He's a kinsman, but there's one of nearer re- uh, relation. Okay. So there's somebody in the way. I'll do this. I'll marry you. I'll take you in, give you a family. But we got a problem. There's somebody else. Let's go on. Tarry this night, and it shall be in the morning. 
And if, I'll, and if he will perform unto thee the part of the kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman's part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of a kinsman to thee, as the Lord liveth, lie down until the morning. And she lay at his feet until the morning, and she rose, and before one could know another, and he said, let it be known, let it be known that a woman came into the floor. Now, anyway, he goes on down, talks about all these things that are happening. So, he has to be a qualified kinsman, he has to be able to perform, and he has to be willing, all right? So when the widow requested this. Now, what did she ask of him? Do you remember when Saul, uh, when David cut off the, the hem of Saul's garment? That's what we're talking about, his skirt. We're talking about his authority, his rank, his, remember when the woman with the issue of blood, who had the issue of blood, touched Jesus' hem of his garment. She's reaching out like this same thing right here. This is the same type of pattern that's happening here. And David was sorry that he ever did it because he touched his authority. Um, so he's asking, she's asking, put the authority of your house over me. That's really what she's asking. She's asking for a partnership. She's asking actually for a marital partnership is what she's doing. There are two issues here to redeem the land for Naomi, taking Ruth to be the wife. As far as the land concerned, the man appears willing to do that, this other man. But for some undisclosed reason, he's unable to perform in marrying Ruth. Now, we don't know why that is, but this will clear the way for Boaz, all right, to fulfill his role as a kinsman redeemer. When that guy can't perform, when that guy can't fulfill it, Boaz like, here's my moment. I can step in now, because he's out of the way. So as we examine Boaz as a kinsman redeemer, we can see that he, fig he prefigures our kinsman redeemer. We were one time strangers and aliens without a covenant, and Jesus came, and he was our kinsman redeemer that covered us and that brought us in Amen. to the family. He will take Ruth, a Gentile, as his bride. That's exactly what Jesus did. He took the church. Gentiles to be his bride. And that suggests the parallel of that. The parallels between Boaz, Naomi, Ruth, and Jesus Christ, Israel, the church, they're recognizable. You can see it. It's remarkable. So who first introduced Boaz to Ruth? When you read the whole thing, it was an unnamed servant. Now, we have an unnamed servant in many ways that introduced us. That's the Holy Spirit who first quickened us and brought us to him. So who is this, who is this um, nearer kinsman that wasn't able to perform? Let me submit this to you, it's the law. It's the law of Moses, they can't save you. Only condemn you, can't save you. And so Jesus came as the next redeemer to fulfill the law. He's, he's the Boaz. He comes to fulfill and take that place. It's all a picture of our relationship in Christ Jesus today. That partnership that began in Moab, can you see that? Between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, I'll go with you. That opens the door. Naomi does not have her land back without that partnership happening over in Moab and she brings him over. So who introduced him? An unknown servant. It's suggestive of the role of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting that in every example of the Holy Spirit, it's viewed, he's viewed in, such, in that role. He's always the unnamed servant. Genesis 24, you have Abraham, the father, sending a servant, and we know his name there, Eleazar, right? But what does his name mean in Hebrew? Comforter? Oh my, you love that. I love the word of God. The comforter comes to get the bride for Isaac. The comforter comes and introduces uh, her to uh, Boaz. The comforter came and introduced me to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I'm gonna let him dwell on the inside of you. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. He'll reveal things to you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So traditionally, it would have been Ruth's responsibility to confront the other kinsmen. Ruth is the one that is supposed to go to the other kinsmen and say, who's it gonna be, you or him? 
But Boaz said, no, 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 I'm not gonna let you confront the law, I'll do it. So we break tradition here. Boaz is the one that will confront. Boaz is the one, now there's a whole lot of other stuff that happens. There's gonna be some shoe stuff happen and a shoe covenant, and uh, I, I don't wanna get into all of that, but there are some covenant things that happen in this story. So it's a picture of the law and the old covenant when Jesus came to confront and fulfill it. Now, here's the interesting thing. So what's gonna happen? They're gonna get married. Mother-in-law gets all the land back the things that were lost to her for 10 years. Listen to me. Some of you, yeah, thank you, Lord. Some people, you've been wondering where it is. You've been wondering kind of in the wilderness. You've been wondering why this is not happening. And some of you, it's been 10 years or more. A partnership is what restored this. One simple little, no, I'm staying with it. You need to stay with the word of God. You need to stay with your faith. You need to stay in partnership with the one that you've been partnered with. I'm telling you, payday's coming. I'm telling you, restoration day's coming. She got all of her land back and got a new, new son-in-law, got a new, she got a new wife. Isn't that beautiful? And that's exactly what happened to us. Now, Naomi is gonna have a son from Boaz. Anybody know who that is? His name is Obed. And he will have a son. You know who his name is? Jesse. 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 Who's Jesse? David's dad. He's the, he's the dad of David. So let's, let me think here a second. It, we're gonna have Obed, and then Jesse, and then David. Look how close that partnership is to King David. Isn't that something? That one little decision will bring King David into the world will bring Jesse into the world. Jesse will send David on an errand. We talked about it last week. Yes. That was a partnership. That line of David is what's gonna bring us Solomon and Nathan and Jesus Christ himself and Mary and Joseph, all because that one little girl made a partnership with her mother-in-law. Well, that's a word for somebody. You just went off in you right there. She made a partnership with her mother-in-law. This is why I always, I, I'm just saying, let the, let, let the Lord speak to you there. But I'm always talking nicely about my mother-in-law. Amen. Amen. Because I'm in partnership. I, I, made a, I made a habit a long time ago to buy my mother a birthday present on my birthday. To send my mother a birthday card. Amen. Amen. And the same thing with my mother-in-law. I don't have my bride without my mother-in-law. Amen? One partnership will change everything in your life. I've shown you now that with David came as a result of this. Jesse's partnership with David, with the troops. Your partnership is working for you right now. Amen. In ways that you can't imagine. Quit digging up the seed with your mouth and realize my partnership is at work. My covenant is at work. Are you getting anything out of this? Yes. We'll be back in just a moment. Come on, everybody. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Get the Power of Covenant and Partnership Package, a book called God, the Covenant, and the Contradiction by Kenneth Copeland and Greg Stevens, and a mini book by Kenneth Copeland called Partnership and Power, Making the Connection, and learn about this God-ordained source of blessing and power. Through covenant in Jesus, everything He has is yours. In the same way, when believers partner together, we share in each other's giftings. From marriage and family to business to ministry, learn to receive by faith the blessing and anointing that comes through covenant partnership. Dive into these special resources and begin receiving those benefits today. Order the Power of Covenant and Partnership Package for only $21.99 on kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. Shipping charges may apply. I'm George Pearsons. I'm pastor of Eagle Mountain International Church, CEO of Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and a longtime partner with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. That partnership is so important to me and to my wife. 
As partners, we've been partakers of the grace that has been upon Kenneth and Gloria, the anointing upon them. And it's been really interesting through the years as we walk together in the Word of God, we've seen the power of partnership work on our behalf. Now, another great thing about partnership is that we are connected to everything that Kenneth Copeland Ministries is doing around the world, whether it's through KCM or Eagle Mountain International Church, KCBC, or the Victory Channel, or any of our global offices. We know that as a partner, we're reaching out with our finances, we're reaching out with our prayers, and people's lives are being changed. I think that's the most important part about that, knowing that people's lives all over the world are being changed by the Word of God, taking people from the milk of the Word to the meat, from religion to reality, and people knowing who they are in Christ. I want to invite you today to become a partner with us in this tremendous work that's taking place. Become a team member and just know that this is a two-way street. We pray for you, you pray for us, and together we are reaching the world with the Word of God. Go to KCM slash partner to become a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries and we know that it's going to change your life. It will change ours. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Get real help for real life problems. Select a topic for answers straight from the Bible. Then believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply what you've heard and read to experience real change in your situation. Each step provides pages of articles, video teachings, topical scripture lists, and recorded prayers and confessions from the Copelands. KCM.org has made it simple to tap into God's wisdom for real help in your life. KCM.org meets you where you are. Welcome back. Remember to order the Power of Covenant and Partnership Package. It's a set of two books, God, the Covenant, and the Contradiction. That's a pretty good one. And the Partnership and Power. You have covenant promises with God that are backed by Jesus himself. He gave you his victory to overcome all the obstacles and keep the blessing of the Lord intact in your life. This applies to your health, your finances, and your family, and your future is at stake here. To get these two resources today, go to kcm.org, your study center. Brother Copeland calls kcm.org your study center. Amen? Amen? Go to it. It's designed to be a place where you can research and learn God's word to help you live in victory. There are videos, daily devotionals, magazine articles, more to study and share with you and your family. Visit kcm.org every day. Keep your faith strong. Professor Greg Stevens and the entire class reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Amen! Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. To learn more about Kenneth Copeland Ministries and how we can help you grow in faith, check out our website for free content and resources available to you on kcm.org.